Greetings. We're looking at the deck of a 538A Hickok Dynamic Mutual Conductance Professional Tube Tester and Analyzer. Uh, this is one of three 538s that I own. We'll be looking at the other one momentarily. The third one is down underneath the bench. Looks like it went through a war zone but operates as well as the other two so it is a, an excellent backup tester. I was, uh, I guess what you would call an eBay addict. For five or six years I surfed eBay daily and never missed the Hickok offerings. And during the, I guess, six years that I was surfing eBay, I probably saw as many 538s come up for sale on the Hickok page. And I purchased, as I said, three of those. The others were either overpriced or were not in really good condition. 538 is somewhat of a rare tester. Most electronic shops, uh, corporations, uh, electronic corporations, and uh, radio stations. I worked for a couple of radio stations that had Hickox, and the popular tester was the 534. When it was time to move up to a little higher grade, they jumped over the next two models, the uh, 536, 535, 536, and 538. Basically, the 536 and 538 were the same testers, a little couple of differences, but anyway, uh, would jump from a 534 to a 539, which is a very sophisticated tester. There are three series, A, B, and C. I have always wanted one. I have never been able to afford it or to justify it. A 539 in either of those series restored calibrated in like new condition can bring up to twenty five hundred dollars and if it has the accessory tester that goes with it even more so I am content to use my 538A here this was the first tester that I bought the first Hickok tester that I bought I bought it back in I believe 06 from a gentleman named Howard Stone. Howard Stone is an authority on vintage electronics, particularly TRF radios. He is a member of my antique radio club in Minneapolis, the Northland Antique Radio Club of Minnesota. A very nice gentleman, and uh, he had just had this tester calibrated by Roger Kennedy, a name that you may be familiar with. Roger Kennedy is probably the foremost authority on Hickok tube testers, Hickok equipment, and vintage electronics. Having been involved with electronics, I would say probably close to 60 years, and who has answered a number of my questions on occasion regarding various problems that I've had with other Hickoks. I do have two 534s, and I have um, a military tester too that has never been used except by me one time just to make certain that it worked and it did. We're going to uh, walk back to another part of the shop and take a look at the other 534 that I have in service that I purchased off. We're back in another part of the radio clock shop. This is probably more radio than clock because it's full of tubes, radios, parts, etc etc this is the 538 that I purchased the second 538 that I purchased off of eBay oh I guess four or five years ago this is a 1948 model the one that we're going to be doing our tutorial with is a 1951 this came to me in basically like new condition I bought it from a gentleman who got it from his dad when uh, his dad got it when he was an employee of the Western Union Telegraph Company and uh, it was used on the line as uh, a testing unit however I don't believe it ever saw much service it is clean 
The deck is almost spotless. The controls don't have any smudges or prints on them except the ones that I have put on them. It's just really a nice tester. One of the reasons that I bought it was because the original Hickok manual came with the tester. There is no reprint of the 538 online. There are no downloads. There are no new manuals, new old stock manuals, or even used manuals ever for sale of the 538 on eBay or online. So that is probably one of the main reasons that I purchased this tester, the others being that I like Hickok and I like the 538. And a real plus was this manual that was printed by the Western Union Telegraph Company Engineering Department. And basically, it is a reprint of the Hickok 538 manual, although Western Union did add some notations of their own. So this is a really nice unit. It uh, is basically the same as the unit we're going to be looking at here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, there are some cosmetic differences. The uh, 538A that we looked at a few moments ago does not have the bias pot fuse. That was a feature that was added by Hickok in 1951 to protect the bias potentiometer. If the bias potentiometer gets shorted, it will burn up almost like self-destruct and it's very expensive to replace. The dial for filaments is a bit different. The dials for English and for bias are a bit different. So let's go back to the radio. And once again we're up in the radio shop looking at our 538A Hickok tester that I use daily in my radio repair shop. I've turned it on, let it warm up for a couple of minutes here and then we'll have some fun just checking it out and seeing how it works. This tester has four tubes. It has two 6H6 diodes which operate uh, the analyzer that we'll look at very briefly, a number 83 mercury vapor rectifier and a 5Y3 vacuum rectifier. I have received testers that I have purchased where the 83 has been subbed with an 80 and 80 will not work and will cause a multiplicity of problems in your tester. One of the big advantages of the 538 over the 534 that we talked about a little while ago is that this is a dual transformer unit. It has one transformer for filament windings for the various filaments uh, voltages that tubes have and it also has a separate transformer for setting up the individual tubes to check mutual conductance. Let's just briefly look at some of the features of the tester. That's the analyzer, which is a, basically a volt ohm meter. It will also check inductors and capacitors for capacitance, but not for leakage. It works. It's just something that I don't need because I have an array of test equipment on my bench. The tube sockets, of course the main meter that we use when we check tubes. The AC voltmeter, which is used to set up a tube before it's tested. The various controls, those two are for the filament. These controls set up the various elements of the tube for testing. Our filament control, also the English and the bias, uh, control for testing shorts. That's the line adjust which corresponds to that meter there. Uh, the various testing position knobs, our bias fuse, which the other tester did not have because this was not introduced until 1951, and uh, this tester is, by the way, a 1951 model. Also, the control for setting up the tube for testing. We have an English position, and we have micromoles on the high scale and low scale that correspond to the meter. This is the roll chart that has all the tube information on it that I need to check tubes. It rolls very easily. I believe this is copyright 1955. I have other roll charts that I sometimes have to refer to for newer sets. 
So, let's have some fun. Let's check some tubes right here. I've been working on a 1954 Chevrolet radio, and uh, we're going to start with the power output tube, which is a 6V6. And I've already set my filament voltage at 6.3 and set the uh, pin configuration. I will set these controls for the various elements of the tube. This is a pento tube. So we will be setting up cathode, control grid, suppressor grid, screen grid, and plate. And these all correspond, these positions, dial positions, correspond to the dial positions on a clock. So at 5347, you can see that we're at and uh, 2, 5, 3, 4, 7, and 2, so you can see we're 5 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 2 o'clock. This is grid, plate, screen, cathode, and suppressor. My bias is 21. I'll set my bias accordingly. And the English is not used. Well, the mutual conductance is 2320. I suspect it may be a little higher, so I don't want to peg my meter, and I'll go up to the number 6,000 scale. I do want to check for shorts. This is a number... 45 neon light. It should last the duration of the tester. And checking for shorts. We have no shorts. So we'll check for mutual, condu mutual conductance. And we're reading approximately oh, 4200, so we're well over spec. I'm going to do a life test on it. I have a lockdown button that I will depress. It's uh, sitting right next to the momentary button. And on life test, I do reduce the voltage slightly, and the needle drops slightly, but not enough to cause us any concern, so this is a good tube. There is one final tube, or one final test of the tube that I will do, which is gas. I need to set my scale at 3000, turn the bias control pretty far up so that I don't peg the meter. I'll push down... P5, which is gas 1, bring my bias pot into range where I'm reading about 100 micromoles. Now, I don't want it to go above 100 or above 200. If it goes up one division, that's okay, but anymore, we have to throw out the tube. So I'll depress P6. There is no movement. This is a very good tube. I'm going to check a vibrator. This is the heart of the power supply of the Chevy radio, manufactured by Sencor. It's a VB2. It'll check 3-pin 12 and 4-pin 6 vibrators, 6-volt vibrators. And there are uh, two different tube settings that can be used. One's a 12-volt setting and one is a 6-volt setting. But the uh, tube setups are 6SN7 and 6AX4, whichever one you want to use. We will go up to the roll chart to 6SN7, and I'm not concerned about any of the other setups except for the pin configuration and the filament. And the pin configuration is JX. I'm going to insert the vibrator into the octal socket, and hopefully. Both of my lights will come on. They do. On top of the vibrator tester, they're flashing bright. So this is a good vibrator. And basically, that's the operation of the 538A Hickok tube tester. Kind of an abbreviated operation. One of the things that I forgot to do and forgot to show you. Uh, I'll put the tube back in. Just reset my filament selectors. Forgot to check the line voltage. And we're just off a little bit, so we'll just move that to the red mark. But we already know the tube is good, so there's no sense in repeating the step and going back through it. When I was a young chief engineer or assistant chief engineer at KDKD in Clinton, Missouri, the uh, engineer that I followed around taught me to always neutralize the tube tester, which means turning all of the controls to the off position. And that's about it. So, hope we had another fun time here in the clock shop, and this has been a little tutorial of the Hickok 538A Dynamic Mutual Conductance Professional Tube Tester and Analyzer.